Okay, how many blocks are on the table? There are four. In increasing order on what they hold, what are they? S is the first block that only holds two. What's the next one? The P holds six. Then the D block holds 10. And finally, on the very bottom, F block holds 14. All right? So next to column one, first of all, what's column one called? It's the what metals? And it's one of your vocab terms, which I'm guessing some of you have started, correct? So what's column one called? Alkali metals, okay? So what is it on the outside of column one? So it's not written in any of those element boxes, but what's written on the outside that helps you with whether it's the uh, noble gas configurations or that of Bohr model. Say that again. Periods. Okay. Who does not know what the periods are? Because you are going to be evaluated on this next week. All right. So I would highly suggest, as we just have the one student gone, looks like it. If you don't understand this, we've said over and over and over again, please make an effort to try and learn and understand this. Okay, so one of the things we look at here, can someone give me an example of an isotope? You can basically pick about any number of elements, but the most common one might be what? Carbon and hydrogen, I believe chlorine has one, probably cobalt. Uh, a lot of these elements probably do have isotopes. So what is an isotope then of carbon-12? Why would we call it carbon-12? When you look at the element box for carbon, what do you see inside of there besides C and carbon and 6 and what else? So why do you suppose we call it carbon-12? That's its atomic mass. So what might an isotope of carbon-12 be? So why is carbon-12, uh, what do I want to say important? How, it's giving me the number of neutrons, which it would have six. So what is an isotope of carbon-12? In other words, it's what we had here, remember? different numbers of what? So we have carbon-12, so carbon-14 exists, so what happens if we're talking about carbon-14? What has changed? The number of neutrons, by how many? Two, two. You're not changing the six because that's what we assign carbon with. It's the number of protons, again, the atomic number. All right, so as we continue then, so as we're looking at this, where did the narrator or host of this show go to uh, see this table produced by Dmitry Mendeleev? Does anyone remember? What type of name does, yeah, Russia. That's where this table was first, uh, was first arranged. Okay, so what tool 
what tool do we use that works in a repeating pattern? It has a bunch of diagonal lines on it. Slide rule. That's right. So what that slide rule does is shows you this repeating pattern that occurs over and over, and it makes the corrections that you need to know or that you would, for instance, need to know. So we see what Mendeleev did was arrange these in increasing atomic mass. Like, uh, the, the host of the show said that's not correct because it's not atomic mass these are arranged in, but rather what instead. The atomic number, which again gives you the number of what? Protons. You could now... I would be careful, don't say electrons, because that will change, can and will change. And before the end of the hour, we'll show you why that is, okay? So this in correction, as we know, elements are arranged in increasing atomic numbers. And it's a specific number of increasing by one. Okay? That's why you see the little red numbers on this west wall. And I don't know where they're written in your boxes. Uh, the upper, upper left-hand corner, like for hydrogen, lithium, sodium, upper left-hand corner of each one of those element boxes is where you find that atomic number. So again, Know that's incorrect, so they are now in increasing atomic number. How was it last night, ladies, out in DeSmet? That's, uh, that's probably a rhetorical question, but... I'm glad it's Friday. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Now, gentlemen, it's your turn to go out. To, uh... But the seniors had said they're getting the dub tonight. Is that right? Pry? Pry? Well, who said hopefully? Oh, okay. Does anyone else not know what dub means? I, I didn't. Yeah, the win. Yeah, the W. Dub. Yeah, that's pry what that means. Yeah, it's pry. Yeah. Your, your parents talk like that at home, too? Pry? Yes. Pry. So, so they attempt. So how do you make it sound like they do a failed attempt to talk like this? Is it an epic fail or do you? Oh, it's just. So what about myself? Pry? Is, is that strange? Pry. I, I probably just use it in the wrong context, right? Pry. But see, I'm right every time I say it. So is that cool or not cool? Pry? Okay. Can Dallas get the dub? You're not going to say pry? You're not going to say pry? Okay. Well, it depends what the weather's like in Los Angeles, right? Yeah, because they're going out west, not down south. Okay, very good, very good. Now, there's a couple places, okay, on the table that these corrections take place, okay? One of them is with that of the noble gases. Okay? And it doesn't show or illustrate that on your table, but it does over here on this table on the west wall. Okay? What that is showing, it's telling you that this is part of the S block up here. 
So why is it, whether it's neon all the way up to radon, each one of those elements has how many valence electrons in it? These noble gases all have, from neon up to radon, all have how many valence electrons? You are correct. Why are you right? What, what column is it in? The eighth column. Remember, the, the actual vertical column that these elements fall into gives you the valence electrons. So if that's the case, why isn't helium sitting up? Why would it be sitting up top there? How many valence electrons does it have? No, not eight, not six, not nine. Why is it two? Because it's in the S block. It can only ever hold two, and that's why it's not attached to the table. Okay? And that's why it says S block up here. Now, the reason that you see it all the way over in column eight is we're talking about stability here. Okay? When the demonstration that is actually quite dangerous, and that's why you would never see that done at this level, there was a, if you want to call it a mesh sock of, of popcorn that was suspended over a bucket where chlorine gas was being injected into this bucket and then is ignited with that of sodium, okay? You put those two together and there's no surprise that will form a very specific compound, which is what? Sodium chloride or salt, okay? So what we see happening is that satisfies what we call an octet and it stabilizes the compounds because then both outer energy levels are full. So what we see happening here these corrections then, this helium then, has an outer energy level that's full. And that's why it's in column eight, because of stability reasons. Okay. I think we want to do this and then that. And then we'll, we'll stop for that second one. So groups, as we all know, are vertical columns on the table. So group one. Please tell me you know how many valence electrons group one elements have. One, because it's in the first column. And that's what it's telling you down here. The group one has one valence electron, group two, and it continues all the way up to column eight. successful season last year with Zeke, don't you think? Yeah, don't know. Fair enough. I'm kind of pulling for Dallas, too. But I, I like Jared Goff, though. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. <clears throat> yes. The next slide, I believe, that tells us that. Okay, so again, these valence numbers are associated only, okay, only for S block elements, which means it could be column one or column two, or P block elements. It means you would have to add both of them together. In other words, nitrogen is in, well, we'll just get, stick it uh, back down to carbon. Carbon is in which column? 
It's in the P block. It's also in the fourth column, which means it has, when we get to that second energy level, it has two electrons from the S shell, and it's also got two electrons from the, the, the P block or P shell. So that's what we mean. You're adding the S and P together if it's over in the P block. And we've illustrated that we just never, let's say, um, I won't say associate, but uh, uh, related it to that type of an example. So again, skip the middle groups. On your table, it says 3 through 12. Remember, we said above boron, carbon, nitrogen on your table, it's going to say 13, 14, 15, 16. We said cross that one off. It will make things a lot easier for you if you do that or if you choose to do that like you have, and maybe you have, like you're following directions, you're following directions. When you do that, it will make things a lot easier for you. See, you're listening, you're listening, yep, you're listening. Yep, you're listening. You're listening. Yeah. Yeah. It's because you, we do that with D block elements because they have more than one charge. But these are. That's what I'm getting at. Because we skip this row here. It's just, it's just one of those things in nature and science that you just do it that way. It's not because that's what a professor or a teacher or a scientist does. That's the way it actually works. That's why. I don't know. Maybe these, maybe Frey Scientific, they don't know what they're doing. Maybe they just like to make things difficult for freshmen in high school. I don't know. But I'm asking you to just do it this way that off. Okay. Okay. So all this time we've been working with, um, does everyone have this information that wants it? Okay. One of the aspects we have not tackled yet was an element in which block. Okay, so what we, not necessarily what we can do, but what we will do, okay, and that is, okay, so go ahead and um, please pick an element in, do, 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 do. Table here. Yes, in okay. So from fifty eight to seventy. Okay, so that is what element then? Thallium. thallium? No, not thallium. Thulium? Yeah, I say thulium. Okay, so one of the things that we can do, okay. All right. So if we're doing a configuration for that, okay, what can you do to make things a lot easier for yourself? Take a shortcut, which is what? A noble gas configuration. Who does not know what we mean when we say a noble gas configuration? 
And how did you know it had to be xenon? Why can't you use radon? Because radon is 86. 86 is too high. It's too big. Okay. So what that means, you correctly said, we're going to start with xenon, which is element what? Okay. So what period, because we know xenon is in the P block, Okay, it's in the sixth column of the P block. So with that, what period is xenon in? It's in the, that's the column. It's in the fifth period. So after that five P block gets filled, the next, okay, the next electron or shell to fill is going to be what? What comes after five? Okay, so we're all the way over here at cesium now, element uh, 55, okay? So that is 6, and we're going to go S2, right? Because we're going to continue to fill these orbitals, okay? According to your slide rule, what comes after 6, S2? Okay. So 4F14, so what we want to do now, it can hold 14, okay? So what we are going to do, okay, and we said make that correction over here. So now we're all the way down to here, so we start counting. How many do we get when we start at 57? All the way up to 69. How many would that be? Well, you need to start counting them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. 4F13. Is there a way that we can check to see if this is correct? Yes. What is 13 plus 2? What's 15 plus 54? 69. So that must be right. Okay. So left side, left outside, are we on the bus? Left middle, right middle, or excuse me, middle, I'm sorry. Middle, middle, right middle, right outside. Okay. One. One or two, that's not so bad. So if you're one that's doing this, you, you have a choice to do. You can just either let things continue the, 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 the path that's going on, or you can choose to ask for help. That's going to be part of your responsibility. In other words, if you had, and I, I think this would make sense, if your check engine light comes on, are you just going to ignore that and just hope it goes away? Now, it could be a sensor, I get that, okay, but one thing you can do, you pull the dipstick out of the uh, block of the motor, check the oil, and it doesn't even register on there, you can do one of two things. You can just ignore it, see where that takes you, or you can add oil. Makes sense, don't it? Or does that not make sense to you? But maybe some of you, if you ruin the engine, you just get your checkbook out and write check for $4,500. Maybe you can do that pretty easily. Of course, that's a joke, I know. Yeah, pocket change. So, again, it, it's personal choices that you can do to help yourself out. Okay, so this is. This might be the easier part, but what about if we had to do, okay, if we had to do the Bohr model for this? That might be a little more difficult, but let's go ahead and attempt that. We know, okay, so inside this, mm, yeah, I think we can fit it in down here. Okay, so again, element 69, okay, so follow your slide rule. That's what you got it for. Okay, so you tell me, 1S2, got you started. What's next? Uh, 
this is starting to fade. I, um, okay. Now, again, how do you know to go to 4S2 before you go back down to here? Because the slide rule tells you that. Okay? So 4S2. Not four, 14. So where does that go? Here? Here? How about here? Okay. There we go. And if we, if you were to add all these numbers together, which, you know, some, some people are better at math than others. Okay. So 10, 20, 28, 30, 40, 46, okay, 59, uh, 61, 67, 69, so that's probably right, okay. Very good. We on the bus. Left outside. We're on our way to the bus stop. Alarm clock didn't go off. Left, middle, then. Middle. Right, middle. Right outside. Right outside. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we've changed things up a little bit. Next Tuesday, what, need, what do you need to have done? And what else? You have an assignment today. Okay, so the rest of the time I will pass that out. Now, sh should you just copy these, which I would not suggest. Working together is fine, but if you're just writing things down just because someone else has that, that's probably not a good idea, especially if you're one that says, I really don't know if I got this yet, or if you're saying that, okay? have our own little ways of deciphering whether we do or don't understand this material okay oh finally I said we're gonna come back to uh, to this columns if you remember from the video okay what's true about chlorine if we had to do that bore model could we know so I'll write it this way we know that there's 17 elect or excuse me protons in the nucleus so 1s2, 2s, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, but 3p what? 5, right? Okay, now, you've correctly told me over and over what column, okay, what column is chlorine in? 7th, and that comes from adding these two numbers together. So... According to the video yesterday, which was correct, okay, this wants to get how many more electrons? One, because it, once it grabs one more, that outer energy level is going to be what? It's going to be full and it's going to be stable. Okay, so, and it doesn't matter which uh, type of alkali metal you use, we will illustrate that with potassium just because I think it's good practice okay so now what's the atomic number for potassium okay so then 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p6 then what how about that Okay. A lot of you, you're looking at that and saying that they're full. That's not always going to be the case. Those numbers tell you what it can hold, not how many they're going to put in. Okay. So why would we just settle with one and not two? What column is it in? The first. So that must mean how many valence electrons does it have? One. This is in column seven. So how many valence electrons are there? Okay. 
So whether it's hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, uh, rubidium, any one of them, they're all gonna have one valence electron. So what does this do to stabilize itself in reference to chlorine? It donates it. So now it's over here. Okay, this outer energy level is what? It's full. What about this outer energy level? It's full. Both of them are now stable. Okay, so what we see happening for the element potassium, we know that protons equals 19. Now, for electrons, we're just adding these numbers together, and the charge of electrons is what? Negative. So how many of those do we have in potassium now? 18. What happens when you add these two numbers together? Plus 1. What does it say inside of potassium's box? It's got a little plus sign there because it's plus 1. That's where that's coming from. It gave an electron away, so now it's got one more proton than it does electrons. That's why it's plus one. The same can be said for chlorine. It's got 17 protons. How many numbers and letters are over here now? Ten, right? Seventeen, right? And we said numbers and letters, that's one more, makes it what? So what happens when we add these two together? What does it say inside chlorine's box? Minus one or negative one. That's where these numbers are coming from. And also what it showed you, these valence electrons in chlorine are designated like this. This is something we're gonna start next week as well. Why is there seven X's? Well, what column is chlorine in? The seventh, okay? Potassium is in which column? So it's got this now has an octet, so it is stable. We've just illustrated that with this. Those electron dot diagrams, we're going to start those next week as well. So if you are not at the bus stop yet, or if you're not on the bus, you are going to fall behind really quickly. We don't want that to happen. So please don't let that happen. Okay, we'll continue with this next week.